Hello there, you delightful citizens of the four-week natural society. All the guys who kind of follow my game, follow my, my journey and the content that I'm putting out. I bring to you today my presentation from the Soapot Summit that I spoke at in uh, September 2019, okay? Now at the Soapot Summit, there's a whole lot of coaches from all around the world, really great guys. Even some guys that I coached on Four Week Natural who went on to become coaches of their own pickup companies. Credit to them. Now, on, on, in this seminar, I talk about the entire Four Week Natural process, okay? And some of the unique things that I know and teach and coach and execute. Me machine. <laughs> they call me the machine. <laughs> some of the unique things that I do when I'm coaching in gaming that not a lot of people know about. So it takes a bit of explanation. It's pretty in depth. It's a very impassioned speech and I'm gonna be really, really glad to share it with you. Now, just so you know, we have now announced, we've released, we've confirmed the cities for Four Week Natural for 2020. Now, I want all of you to know that I've been really, really busy in the last uh, 24 months building my second business called Alex Media Studio, okay? It's a special media studio in a bus that travels all around Europe making videos and media for uh, models and yachts and hotels and tourism campaigns. It's pretty much the dream job and I've been working really, really hard to set it up to go in conjunction with Four Week Natural. In the future, I am gonna take on new Four Week Natural coaches, but it'll have to be a two-year education and a commitment and all this kind of stuff. But now that Alex Media Studio is finished, I'm gonna go back into developing Four Week, four week Natural Legacy full-time. So 2020 is gonna be the following locations. Starting in January, there's, there's 10, there's 10 uh, locations. January is Thailand, February is Sydney day game, Sydney day game only with some bonus night game. March is gonna be Austin, Texas. April is gonna be back here in Oslo, Norway. May is gonna be in Amsterdam. June, July is gonna be in Havar. August is gonna be in Warsaw, Poland. August, September is gonna be in London. October is gonna be in New York. And then uh, by November is gonna be back to Melbourne, Australia. Okay, so the full roster is there, right? So I'm really, really excited to, to get to some of those places and return to some of the students in those cities. Furthermore, we have our website called fourweeknaturalworld.com. Did you know that on fourweeknaturalworld.com we have the day game program, the night game program, and the inner game program? You have access to the first two modules of each of those programs for free. So you can go on there and watch my best night game content, day game content, and inner game content. Each of those programs, they're like, there are about 23 modules each, but you can see the first two modules, they're about an hour's presentation for each of them, there's six of those. Get over there, make a, uh, an account on the website and enjoy it, okay? Furthermore, we've just been admitted onto iTunes and onto Spotify, onto Podbean, so we're gonna be podcasting a whole lot, and uh, I'm gonna be blogging on Four Week Natural YouTube and Alex Media Studio YouTube as well. So when you think of me, Think of Four Week Natural, the pickup coaching, and think of Alex Media Studio, the photographer, the media, the adventurer, the traveler, the videographer. Both of those two things go together because I want to create a legacy. I want to both have my photography business that will serve me forever, and now my coaching business, the, the, the science, the psychology, the intellectual property of how to meet, attract, seduce, form relationships with women, okay? And that's what this uh, video is gonna be about today. So check out all of that all those things that I've got going on. I've been working really, really hard. It's been a bloody battle, but I've come out really well on the other side and I'm really, sh really glad to share it with all of you, to work with some of you in person and to meet you in the future. Enjoy the seminar. Check out the, uh, the resources. Catch you soon. Come, Alex Social. Hello. <laughs> cool. Good yeah. uh, no, I've got, got a voice. Cool. All right, I'm sure you're all a little bit tired after a big week of fucking speeches, chasing girls, going out, wasting money, getting drunk. But it's a week, it's a week well used, well utilized, and I hope that you've all got laid, had a bit of fun, and that you've got the energy to absorb the last uh, pearls of wisdom that I hope to share with you here today. A little bit of a background, a background story on me. My name is Alex, I'm from Australia, I'm 34 years old. I am the most experienced live infield pickup coach in the history of time. Nobody has coached more students on days on planet Earth than me, only me. Why? 
I like it. I studied to be a psychologist. I love the adventure and RSD drove us into the fucking ground like slaves, okay? I studied psychology at university in 2006. I did a boot camp with RSD. They quickly recruited me to be one of their instructors starting in 2007. And from 2007, I traveled the world doing 45 boot camps a year, three and four days a week uh, for eight years straight up until 2014. So, Tell you a little bit about that. The truth with RSD and me being in RSD in 2007, before YouTube, before infield videos. Do you guys? Did anybody here do pick up in 2007 and eight? No. I mean, like some of you weren't even born in 2007, probably. <laughs> probably some of you didn't even speak English in 2007. The internet didn't even fucking exist. But God, God's honest truth is in 2007, 2008, 2009, RSD boot camp. Pick up boot camp is like, got my two students. Come on, guys, let's go to the club. State, state, pump, pump, okay. Money, 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 fuck you, right? And off we go. Then, two years later, in 2009, we invented, well, they, they invented cameras good enough to do in-field video. So all of a sudden, I got this motherfucker with a camera saying, okay, show us how to pick up. And all of a sudden, we couldn't do it, right? Myself and Tyler was were two of the guys to do it first and it was kind of difficult. But when we started analyzing ourselves on camera, and of course we have to teach what we've done on camera every week, then we started to get good. Really fucking good. And I'll teach you what we've learned in that time in a second. Anyway, a little bit about me, a little bit more. Um, I've released 300 YouTube videos on pickup. I did the I Am Enough manifesto. I had a different mustache at that time. Um, I've released uh, three online programs, Social Encrypted, Day Game, Phone Game, and No Reason You're Not Enough Online. Um, I have a company called The Four Week Natural. Okay, this is really important to understand my perspective of how I'm going to teach you. The way, that, the way that I coach is we do a four week program. So I'll take up to nine students and shh, English understanders are having trouble enough as it is. By the way, anybody having trouble with my Australian accent? That's all right? Cool. I've adapted over the years. So the way, the way that I coach my, my programs now is I'll take nine students and we have five weekends. The concept is called Four Week Natural. What I noticed as a coach, especially with my assistants and my interns, is that a student would naturally change after about two weeks. So if you're trying to learn game or go on a diet or uh, get strong in the gym, get into a new routine, usually you don't actually make any change until after about 14 days or two weeks. And so it's really important to not do three days of coaching because you don't really make that in-depth change. But having nine students going all together for five weekends, everybody starts to change after about 14 days. What happens though, and I relate to you in the audience, when you're trying to change your life, your diet, your finances, your pickup life, what happens is, You'll, you'll work really hard at it. Maybe you'll go, to the, you'll go and buy all this new workout gear, you'll sign up at the gym, and you're really enthusiastic for about seven to 10 days. And then what happens? You go back into old routines. But with Four Week Natural, when my students, they get over the initial enthusiasm of doing a pickup program, then they start facing their blind spots, their harsh realities, and their fears. And that's really, really important for you as a student when your coach identifies your issues, identifies your troubles and says, motherfucker, don't snap back into your old ways. I'm gonna show you the, the alternative, the better way to do it. You've come here to learn from me and now that you are changing after 14 days, it's gonna come with vulnerability, stress, uh, fear. Uh, you're gonna become a little bit more introverted and anxious while you're changing and that's when it's literally like, I'm an airline pilot, we're going through turbulence and I'm like, motherfucker, relax, we'll get through this You'll learn more things about yourself. You'll get results. I'll help you to remain confident when you're doubting yourself and then you'll get results, you'll change and that's how to get good with girls. So after you go through the turbulence, you've got about 10 more days after that, up until 33 days to execute what you've learned, to enjoy the changes and it works really, really well. So nine students, 33 days. So what I'm gonna teach you today has come from me teaching 32 of these programs over the last five years, right? I quit RSD in 2014. Actually, when I went to quit RSD on uh, the 1st of January 2015, I tried to call both the bosses twice 
Uh, no, three times a day. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner for 18 days straight. And I couldn't get to them. They wouldn't answer the fucking phone. I'm like, okay. Well, I know what I'm dealing with here. I made a re resignation video, and then they both called me straight away. Alex, what the fuck? Sorry, guys. I quit. But Four Week National has been a lot better. It's been much better for me to connect with students. So if I'm going to have you on a program, and I know that I'm working with you for 33 days straight, there's a lot of transparency, <laughs> and you can't hide. You can't hide your blind spots or your issues or your fears uh, or your ego. We're going to break that shit down. So, let me, I want to share with you today some things that I think that I might know that you might not know that I think is going to help your game instantly. I've got a feeling that most of you in the room are kind of like beginner to advanced, right? You're going out a lot and some of you are, no, beginner, beginner to medium, sorry, beginner to intermediate. <laughs> Sorry, I'm always trying to translate beginner language to advanced language, so that's what's going to be. You're, you're beginner to medium, that's what I'm thinking. I bet most of you are having state issues. You're having state issues, feeling shitty in the club? Or you're not. You are having state issues? Okay. Another common issue that I think this crowd might be having, you are having trouble keeping control of the girl's attention. Having that issue? Who here has approach anxiety? Okay, all right, okay, now I'm getting a kind of a picture of where we're all at. Um, all right, okay, that being the case, who here has been going out like almost three or four days this week? Three or four days? Okay, okay, so you're a committed crowd, you're taking action, you're facing the regular problems. I'm going to teach you some new terminologies that you haven't heard before that we have demonstrated on an infield video many, many times, and I teach it to my students on the four-week natural. On four-week natural, coming from the most experienced pickup coach on the fucking planet. Not saying that I'm the best, saying I'm the most experienced. Um, we have four big items of curriculum, four big things. And these are the things, after all the shit that I've heard, after all the years working in RSD, working with some of the great pickup coaches that are here in the room today, the four things that I teach, number one, is that there's no reason you're not enough. All right? Has anybody seen the, the I Am Enough manifesto? A couple of you guys seen it? It's kind of like my, my big piece. Now, in terms, I'm going to talk about this one just briefly, right? In terms of your sense of value, right? A lot of pickup dudes, they, they have issues with, am I high status? Do I DHV? Do I have to show that I'm man to a woman? This kind of shit. Our model that we use is not to try to be high value, but rather to be of, of value. Zero value. Think of it that way. You as the guy, you're a zero value. You're of value. And your goal is not to get attraction, but to establish familiarity with the girl. A familiarity. The reason why we talk about it this way is because the way you interpret attraction game and picking up girls is this overcompensating bullshit game. High energy in her face. Fucking notice me. I don't want to lose your fucking attention. And that's just like a guy with a small dick trying to get attention, right? You learn it on the internet, get some high energy, be physical, get in her fucking face, cut the space, all those key phrases that you hear on the internet. We're actually working on familiarity. I'm gonna reconcile our method with what you've heard in a second, right? The girl, she's like, she's not neutral value. She's much more fluctuating in her own sense of value, right? So you guys, you know, sometimes you doubt yourself, but otherwise you're generally neutral. You don't even need to strive to be high value, egotistical, throwing money around, stuff like that. The girls, a lot of the time, they feel kind of a lot of doubts in their personality and their value. A woman strongly identifies with her external people around her, whereas you guys usually identify more individually. So you can help her to identify herself. You are the validator of her. She often overcompensates from being like a stress on her sense of value by being highly energetic, crazy, playful, putting on a, an aggressive emotional front, especially in a bar when there's alcohol going around. So I don't even talk that much about you are enough to the students. We're running a program where we assume that you're normal and you're of value the entire time, okay? So when I see students overcompensating for being low value, I'm like, fuck, you're sending all the wrong signals, okay? Now, one of the biggest concepts that ties in with your state issues and your anxiety and your general failure to pick up is called the front door rule. 
Seal, is Seal in the room? Is he here now? Yeah. Do you teach the front door rule in night game? No. You don't teach, you don't talk about it? Richard, we use it like as a, a common phrase. Richard just finished four week natural with me and Havar. <laughs> he dominated and did very fucking well. So let me teach you a concept that I want all of you to start thinking about and using tonight, okay? The front door rule, it goes with like approach anxiety, state control, attraction. But instead of trying to get attraction from the girl you talk to, I'm not trying to get attraction. I'm trying to be the guy who leaves out of the front door with the girl later. So that's what I teach to my students. I'm not teaching you attraction game. I'm teaching you a mindset to make sure that you leave the club with the girl. So everything's built around that. Now, if I tell a student, I'm like, hey, you don't need to be attractive. You don't need to be attractive. You can relax, you can talk to the girl, you can do your physicality, your push-pull, your sexuality, your problems, you can do all the attraction stuff, but that's not the goal here. You know what it looks like, right? You see other guys in the room, like approaching girls, and they're try-hard. The problem when guys do attraction is they're like, hey, ugh, like gaming really, really hard, and the guy will tend to scan the girl's eyes to see if he's doing okay. You'll notice that in each other when you're going out. Like, hey, hey, is my game working? Like, not wanting to lose control of the interaction. When you think about the front door, you think more about leaving the club with the girl later, making a plan around that, rather than trying to get her to love you in that moment. So, here's a tip that's worth writing down, okay? One of the things, it's a really, really, really easy thing to implement, is don't keep a track of the girl's eyes. For example, if you do some kind of like attraction material, if you escalate, if you crack a joke, or if you nag her or disqualify her, what you tend to do is you'll do the disqualification and say, ha, my parents will fucking hate you. But you'll linger and you'll watch her eyes to see if your joke has hit the mark. And that is a dead fucking giveaway that you suck. The girl knows that you're trying, you're trying not to lose control. You're hoping that you do well. Instead, where should you look? You should look to the DJ. You should look to the sky. You should look to the, you know, the roof, the, the art on the wall. So I might say to a, a girl over here, oh my God, you're fucking beautiful. My brother will love you. And then look away straight away. But I'm still you know, keeping involved with the girl. What all of you doing, this reaction seeking stuff is indicated by tracking the girl's eyes too much. Now, a lot of, like, in, in, in terms of not talking about attraction type of game, obviously, do your attraction. In Four Week Natural World, we call it the Trinity, the three big things. And these are the things that I want you to write down as well. Three things to do attraction is sexuality, uh, encouraging, and negging, trolling the piss out of her. One thing that a lot of you guys don't do is uh, encouraging. Doing the encouraging stuff, the positive range of emotions. I got it, there's some idea that I was thinking of, I forgot it, oh well. Think of it later, just going with the flow today. So, attraction material, obviously. Sexual stuff is like plot lines, we're gonna get married together, we're gonna have an affair, I'm gonna, you can be my mistress, all the basic stuff that you already know. Say it, deliver it, deliver your sexual content and then look the fuck away, right? Escalate on the girl, pick her up, dip her down, kiss her on the neck, look away, right? Physica physicality is obviously included with all of this. One thing that you don't do enough for, oh, the high value shit, I've got to talk to you about that. One thing that students don't do enough is the encouraging content when you speak to a girl. You need to encourage her, you look really beautiful. Good job for studying that. That's a great idea to travel there. You're a great family member. That kind of encouraging game. You gotta realize that you are of value. She is of subordinate value and she seeks validation for who she is from people that she looks up to. So if you come in acting like an authority, being respectful and acknowledging her for what she wants to be acknowledged for, that's almost like giving a rat a pleasure button, like in a fucking cage. You're beautiful, really? Say it again, you're beautiful, say it again. You're elegant, say it again. The girl actually loves that, fair enough, right? Everybody wants to be validated by an authority. So do a lot of that and of course, use a full range of emotions, the positives and the negatives. So neg the girl, do some trolling, disqualify, all that kind of stuff. Now, here's the model where we're unfolding the model here in front of you. In terms of 
uh, actually, who here has issues with not being high value? Or I always get this fucking question from students, especially students who watch all this RSD shit on the internet. And a lot of RSD is good. It gets guys out of the house, approaching, empowers them, sure. But I might say to a student, dude, you already approached that girl, go and approach her again. She's going to the dance floor. She's leaving the club. You're allowed to leave with her. But the students, they're like, but isn't it low value to chase? Who here has this fucking idea in their head? It's low value to chase the girl. You idiots. I fucking hate this. You put your hand up, right? Yeah. How, how the fuck can you be low value? Are you, are you desperate or needy or something? That doesn't change, actually, yeah. Are you desperate to get laid? Are you a virgin? No. Are you probably going to get laid in the future? And you take three steps to the side to, to re-approach. Oh shit, your game's fucked. No, no, no. Get this out of your fucking head. You are enough. You're a normal. You're a zero value and she's fluctuating value, right? Yeah. Usually fluctuating on average a little bit lower than, than it is high. So this stupid fucking question, I don't want to re-approach her. Isn't it low value to chase? No. We call this concept qualification by pursuit. When you chase a girl a couple of times, when you re-approach a couple of times, when you fight the fight to get her attention, even if she's indifferent to you a couple of times, you qualify her by pursuing her after doing a four-week natural course. He's actually a Dutchman who did a course with me in Croatia, goes to Ukraine, gets laid, comes here to Poland, gets laid, go to be a Serbia as well somewhere, travel on the wall, having a good old time. He was a brilliant student, because when I say to a student that you are allowed to re-approach, most students think what you think is like, fuck, it's low value. I'm giving away my value. I'm looking desperate, chasing the fucking girl. And Richard's like, hey, man, I, I, I saw your coaching work for so many of our friends. I'm just going to do it. And almost every fucking time with Richard, and this guy is like having a six pack, having his own business, traveling the world, he will approach the girls straight up. The girls are like, nah. Nah, I don't know if I like you. Rich is not that funny of a guy either. He's like not that funny in, uh, in general. And he would just keep reapproaching them, being fair, being cool. And he wasn't really freaked out about the value thing. And at the end of the night, the girls would be walking down the fucking pathway in Havar. He would walk with them. And next thing you know, he's swimming naked with these Swedish fucking models down in the ocean, getting stung by urchins in the ass. A true romantic fantasy, really, right? <laughs> but that, like, that was his turning point on the program because if you're all, you're all like kind of hardworking, capitalist thinking guys, you don't want to give an inch, right? You don't want to give in. You don't want to take a step backwards. You're allowed to do that. So we're building the model here. You're in the club. We're aiming at the fucking front door. Hello. Hello. Have we met? <laughs> Have a seat. <laughs> Well, you've upstaged me. Who are you? I'm Thomas. Thank you. Nice to meet you. He, how did he get more of a clap than me? What the fuck? Good job. All right, you got, you got a job now. All right, back to, back to the model. You're going in the club. You're approaching a lot of girls. Now, what, what normally happens right, when you go in the club pretty early on, there's two, there's two distinct phases in a club or a nightclub or a party or whatever. There's kind of like the, the calm, non-drunk phase, right? I'll even do a diagram, right? Gotta love a fucking diagram. That's the start of the night, and that's the front door time. Timeline. The, on the only fixed variable that I know of in the nightclub is that everybody has to leave the club. So that's one fixed variable that we can work with. There's two phases. Kind of like a sober phase, and then a kind of like a drunk phase. When everyone's getting, well actually, guys start getting drunk enough that they start thinking that they can approach anybody and not give a fuck. Regular, chode guys who've got a bit of money. Girls start getting drunk enough, they start like wobbling around a little bit, bumping into each other, and we call this inversion point the wet floor point. Sorry, organizers. So when you look at the floor, in the club and it starts to be wet, that's when, <laughs> that's when other random guys in the club are like, oh, everyone's drunk, I'm allowed to grab fucking girls. So, before this point, I'll even make a note, wet floor point, right? This is bro science directly from 4 Week Natural. 
wet floor point. We do the four week natural in uh, Thailand as well on the beach. And I'm trying to explain the wet floor point on the sand. The students are like, but the, it's a fucking beach. I'm like, it's a fucking point, okay? It's just a theory, go with it. When you go to the club and you're being relatively normal and you're not seeking reactions, but you are doing attraction material and you're meeting a lot of girls, our biggest issue, because we are naturally attractive, because we are enough, we are of value, our biggest issue is not attraction. We get attraction everywhere we go. I'm sure the coaches at the back of the room pretty much should be assuming they're getting attraction with everybody they're meeting. I've got a feeling that everybody in this room, probably you can open most of your sets and have a two minute, have a one minute conversation. It's easy enough to start a fucking conversation. Our biggest problem is figuring out who the fuck is down to fuck, all right? Who the fuck is actually single and logistically available? So we're running a model like this. We're going in and we are approaching several different groups of girls, four or five, right? And in a group of girls, there's going to be three or four girls. They're going to be friends. There might be a guy there, whatever. Richard, what's our most favorite line to use when going between sets? Precisely. Who uses that? Don't let me stop you. This is the best line you can use in the fucking club. And it's not an attraction line. It's a I'm leaving this set line. Are your pens and fingers not fucking moving? Write it down. Don't let me stop you. The more you use this, the better your game will be. Not attraction material. Not attraction material. Not, not routines. Not any of that. The idea is you would go in. It's easy enough to talk to a couple of people. And we're screening the fuck out of them. We're trying to figure out. Where do you live? What are you doing tomorrow? Do you want to get drunk? How do you know your friends? What are your sleeping arrangements tonight? We will figure all of that out in 10 seconds. I'll tell you how to do that in a second. But the real attraction material, the real attraction material is when the girl fears losing you to another girl. All of you, all of you can probably, if you're very clever, even the coaches who are pretty experienced, all of you can go up and do an attraction stack. You can be physical, range of emotion, compliment her, do some kind of takeaway, stuff like that. And the girl's going to be pouring on your, like touching, touching your arm, flirting with you, having fun, playing games. Sure, right? You're almost, almost an entertainer man. Like this guy's fucking fun. He's really cool. We'll play with him. I do like him. I'll take his number. I'm not going home with him. To actually trigger the girl to want to go home with you and sleep with you or you know, see you on the first date or the second date, it's her fear of loss that has to be engaged. Remember, human beings are not, motive, are not motivated by something new. Human beings are motivated by something lost. All of you guys, I look around at you in the room, you look like you shower, you can fucking afford clothes, you can go to a seminar to educate yourself. You're great, you're fucking great, good for you. But that's not enough. Here's a guy, you look great. Not great enough to fuck though. <laughs> but if I talk to you and I'm a girl and then you talk to a different girl then I'm like what I've lost him this is the fucking trick this is the trick instead of instead of playing this overcompensating aggressive attraction fucking game attraction 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 which you start to look a little bit low value because you're trying too fucking hard the girl will sense that and you guys will be seeing that in each other when you're gaming out in the club. You see your friends, they're doing good game, but it might be a little bit too try hard. It's including other girls that's actually gonna trigger the girl to take action on you, to take the phone call, and she knows that you're a popular guy. It's fucking brilliant. We'll get back to the model in a second. Clarification question. Yeah, um, the, uh, <laughs> don't let me stop you. Is that a, uh, like an opener or more like a mind frame? Uh, because <laughs> that's an interesting <laughs> opener. Hey, don't yeah, let me stop you. Yeah. Okay, I won't, I won't stop you. <laughs> don't let me stop you. Let me explain. So we're going in the club. <clears throat> and actually, another concept that not a lot of people are aware of is that girls and human beings have something called being, being approached anxiety. You have approach anxiety. They have being approached anxiety. So you go and approach the girls and they're sober, they don't know how good they look in their dress. They feel ugly next to the other girls in the club. They're not drunk yet. <clears throat> they feel judged and they shut down and they look like their behavior is a bit of a rejection behavior. So early on, where's my magical blue pen here? 
you want to do a couple of different interactions, screen them and get to know them. You want to build that social abundance in the club, obviously enough. The magic fucking word, however, is don't let me stop you so that you can create other options for you. But most importantly, it's jealousy. Good old fashioned fucking jealousy. One of the biggest mistakes that my guys make on Four Week Natural is they get into the club, they're having a good time. I give them a couple of lines to, to kickstart their infield campaign and they find themselves in an interaction and you feel safe. You're like, fuck, my interaction's working, this is great. And you don't want to take yourself away. Who here is guilty of that? You get one good interaction going for the night, and you're like, I don't want to leave. Idiots, all of you. To quote Dr. House, idiots, you're all idiots. Obviously. Another really bad thing that girls recognize is when you're camping on the set. You're having a conversation with the girl, you're like, oh, it's going really well. So you fucking unpack a tent out of your bag, put it down in the ground. I'm staying here all night. You're stuck with me. Now bear in mind, wet floor point. You remember the wet floor point? Right, we'd go back to one of these ones. Sorry, Matthias or whatever you Polish name. Wet floor point. <laughs> this is like no, no camping. No camping. This, camping. When the floor is wet, you camp, all right? We'll get into the science of wet floors and camping in a minute. I actually bought a camper to have more sex. I'll explain that one in a second. I have two businesses. I have a media studio as well in the camper van. Now, where are we here? So, screening. Four big curriculums on four-week natural. You are enough, front door rule, four times rule, and screening. I will go into an interaction and I want to know everything about the girl in about 15 seconds flat, okay? So here's how we screen. There's actually about seven point eight points of screening. If you're writing shit down, you might want to write this down. One, check her Instagram. Two, does she have a boyfriend? Three, is she drinking tonight? Four, does she respond to sexual jokes? Five, how does she know her friends? Six, how is she getting home? Seven, what is she doing tomorrow? Eight, is there anything else that I missed? For you natural guys, that's a, what's that? Like wine. <laughs> Actually, we say tequila. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, it was the boyfriend screen. <coughs> so here, here is a basic screening stack that works really well, really quickly. So I'll go and I'll approach. Oh, the eighth one is the takeaway. The eighth one is the takeaway. The don't let me stop you. So let me demonstrate this to you. We're going to go to the club. And the big advantage that I have over most of you guys probably is that I can create five options for myself and have a knowing I, I know who's available and I can make a knowing decision based on who I want to go for. Whereas you guys might hope for the best with the one option you have and that will really limit you. So, I'll go up to a group of three girls and I'll roll in. I want to know all of those eight things about the girl. Does she have a boyfriend? What is she doing tonight? How does she know her fucking friends? How is she getting home tonight? What is she doing tomorrow? I want to know that straight away. So I'll say, hello, nice to meet you. I'm Alex, uh, I just finished work, I'm having a great day. Can I buy you a shot? Can I buy you a shot? I'm only gonna have a shot if you have one. Now, when, this is a, a, a favorite technique of mine. I ask the girl, can I buy you a shot? Even before I've even asked her name. Now, do I go around and buy 25 shots for girls in the bar? Fuck no. But if you simply bring up the topic, do you wanna get a drink? Can I buy you a shot? My friend's a bartender, you wanna get shots? In Croatia, actually, my friend was the bartender. So I'm like, hey everyone, you wanna get some fucking shots? And girls are like puppies, like, yes, shots. They only cost like one euro, but thank you for getting it for me for free. And it, it indicates a lot the girl's attitude towards me, the girl's attitude that night. Maybe she has to work tomorrow, maybe she has a boyfriend. A girl with a boyfriend is not gonna quickly agree to grab shots, right? So I'm gonna find that out. Then, where does it go from here? I would say, I would say something like, uh, do you work at a bakery? She's like, what the fuck? I'm like, I, I, I hope that you work at a bakery. Like 6 a.m. tomorrow morning, are you working at a bakery? I just love croissants. Out of fucking nowhere. She's like, no, I don't work tomorrow. I work on Monday. Or she may say, oh yeah, fuck, I, I gotta work at my parents' business tomorrow. So I know how late of a night she can have. Then I might ask, what's your favorite drink? Implying that I might buy the drink. <coughs> she may say tequila or vodka Red Bull or nothing. So I'm getting a picture of what's going on. Now here's a kind of a diabolical trick that I do use. If I like where it's going with the girl, and I think that I've got a good thing going on, I'll lead her to the bar. 
Now, when you offer the girl a drink, all 1.5 euros of it here in Warsaw, how much does a drink of a vodka cost in Warsaw? One pound. Like. One pound. Two, two euros. Does anybody here have this like archaic policy to never buy a girls drink? Do you remember Mystery said that in 2004? Must be relevant. <laughs> never buy bitches drinks. <laughs> Motherfuckers, you've got jobs. The girl has to spend like a thousand euros on makeup and, and gym and psychology lessons to deal with men. Psychologists to deal with men. <laughs> it's not the end of the world to offer somebody a drink. Nonetheless, if you say I'm going to go buy a drink at the bar and you like the girl, when you're leading that girl to the bar, you can really get away with everything. You can escalate, you can troll, you can compliment. She's kind of like on your scholarship during that six or seven minutes that you're offering him the drink. And of course, when you shuffle up to the bar, there's a lot of like shuffling around, intimacy, escalation, whatever. By the way, I've got this one killer tip that I use for approach anxiety. Who here suffers from approach anxiety? Even after seven days of Soapot Summit, Fuck, Matthias, I thought you were going to fix that for these guys. Is that how you pronounce it? <laughs> Here's what I do when my students have approach anxiety. We use a concept called the incidental approach. So basically, basically, you line up to the bar as though you're going to buy a water or a beer or whatever. And while you're lining up, you incidentally have the conversation. So it's like I'm going to the bar and I included the girl in the conversation rather than basically crossing the floor, going over and meeting somebody. Hi, nice to meet you. So we do incidental approaches again and again and again. So it's not like you're approaching, you're taking the pressure out of the approach. So that's the tip that we use. I, for one, do it all the time. And another even slightly higher level tip is that I'll line up next to the hottest girl standing near the bar. I'll hear what they're talking about. It gives me plenty to talk about with them and I go from there, easy enough. And if they're like, ooh, that's awkward, or we don't, it's girls night. I'm like, I wasn't even here to fucking talk to you. I was just getting a drink. You're invading my space. So, you know, that's how I, that's one of the really, really approach anxiety beating tips. Now, back to screening. One of your biggest fucking problems is finding out if the girl actually has a boyfriend or not early on in a nightclub situation. Obviously, all the girls want to meet. I'll get you in a sec. Mr. Phil, I've seen you on the internet. Um, obviously, every girl loves to have fun, meet new guys, have a good fucking time. There's usually three generic reactions that a girl will give you based on her relationship status. Often, you'll fall into the trap where you'll meet a girl and she's like, hey, what's going on? Nice to meet you. This is my friend. She's really easygoing. She's quick to open up. Beware. Beware that reaction. The friendly, encouraging girl. She's usually the hottest one in the group as well. She has a boyfriend who's somewhere that's not there, in a different area, in a different place. She has nothing at risk. She's not going to risk cheating on her boyfriend. She's just there to be friends. The other counterintuitive reaction is you'll go and talk to a girl. You are enough. You're well-dressed. You're a cool guy. And you speak to the girl and she almost shuts down. She pays attention to you, but she becomes nervous, awkward, and even a little bit evasive. That's what we call quiet and attentive, and that's when the girl is thinking, this is a guy, I don't want to fuck it up, I want to be cool, I don't know what I should do. It happens a lot with Richard, because he doesn't have much of a sense of humor, but he has really great abs. It's like, Alex, fuck, why didn't you coach him to have a sense of humor? I tried, but he's getting better. Good Richard. You get late, so it's fine. Ch chafed dick Richard, right? <laughs> <laughs> Give him the thumbs up in the corner. The third reaction, which is unusual, sometimes you'll approach a girl and she's just like, don't fucking talk to me. Oftentimes that's because she has a boyfriend somewhere within line of sight. So usually there's like three reactions. The girl who's too friendly, be careful. The girl who's quiet and attentive, that's usually where the results are. Uh, the girl who's bitch, usually her boyfriend is nearby. The bouncer, the bartender, something like that. These are generalizations, whatever. Now, we need to know about the boyfriend situation. You don't want to get into a situation where you're having fun with a girl all night, you're chatting, she's friendly, she's encouraging you, but three hours later you find out she had a boyfriend all along. The way that we screen that, I'll be, uh, I'll be talking to the girl, we're waiting for a drink at the bar, we're waiting for our friends or whatever, and I'll say, hey, hey, that's my, uh, my friend over there, he's single, do you wanna date him? And obviously the girl's gonna say no, but when you instantly follow up with, why not? 
why don't you want to date my friend? He's fuck. He's got a fucking man butt. She's like, well, well uh, I've got a boyfriend. Usually she'll spit it out and reveal if she's got a boyfriend or not at that point. So do you want to date my friend? Why not? I, I don't know. I don't know him. Maybe if I got to know him, that would reveal that she's single. And then I even follow up because I need to know. If you're single, why are you single? I really want to fucking know for sure if she's available or not. We have other even more advanced uh, screening techniques where our friends ask on behalf of each other, but it's a little bit too complicated even to explain here. So we want to know that. We Obviously, I want to know where does she live? Last screening question is, do you have a cat? And the girl is going to say no or yes or whatever. And then I'll ask why. Can you, do you, do you have a, can you have cats where you live? Or do you have a dog? Or do you have a goldfish? What kind of pet do you have? Because I want to know, does she live with roommates or parents or student accommodation or hostel? We want to know that. So let me just show you this screening stack in about five seconds flat. Hello, nice to meet you. I'm, I'm waiting in line at the bar. Bar is right here. Do you want to get shots of tequila? She's like, maybe. I'm like, cool, you look like a fucking dog person. You get shots if you're a dog person. I'm not a dog person, I'm a cat person. Why, do you live with your, do, is it like your roommate? It's like, yeah, just me and my cat. I'm like, ah, good. Do you want to date the bartender? He's only got one arm, but he's fucking hot. No, why not? I don't know, I don't know him. Well, who do you date? Why are you single? It's like, I don't know, guys are weird. Cool, cool. Do you work at a bakery? I'm only getting you a fucking drink if you get me croissants. It's like, no, I, got, I don't work on Sundays. So now I know she might be single. She might be having good living arrangements. She might be free tomorrow. She's cool for the shot. At that time, with that girl, I'm like, okay, you're amazing. I'm gonna get my friend for you because he will love you. I walk away, won't buy the drink, go and get a friend or something like that. He goes like, what the fuck? This walking away from interactions is one of the best things you can do. Imagine you're having a good time with a girl, having a bit of a chat. You're starting to kick things off in a positive way. That's when you get into your little comfort zone. And I will say out of the blue for no reason, even if I know they're single and they've got good logistics, and there's only two of them, something straightforward, I'll say, hey, I'm interrupting. I'll leave you to it. And it's funny because it will show the girls real feelings towards you. Sometimes the girls will be like, no, don't, don't go, don't go. Other times they're like, you fat fucking Australian with a dad bod, what the fuck? Learn English. Depends on what country I'm in, All right? I used to be lean. Then I, got, then, I, then I started a company, I got stressed. So you want to create these options. All right, now I want to draw your attention to this magical concept called the, uh, the wet floor point. If you're making a combination of uh, connections, maybe four groups, right? Ideally, ideally, you want to get every girl's Instagram you talk to. Who here almost always gets the Instagram? Eric and fucking Richard, put your hands up. You better be always getting that Instagram, always. It's so important you always get the Instagram. It's such an easy talking point. Show the girl one of your stories from today, like judge her uh, photo feed as a photographer, whatever. That way when you bump into that girl again, she's gonna instantly recognize you as a guy. Oh, I already gave him my Instagram. We're somehow cool with each other. It's such an easy fucking thing to do. Get the Instagram and say, oh, by the way, it's girls night, I'm out of here, you guys have fun. And they're like, oh, okay, cool. Remember the girls as well, young girls, single, going out, they don't wanna be stuck meeting only one guy for the night, they do wanna keep their options open. And to be honest, in a girl's greedy little heart, <laughs> they do dream of the unicorn man. And here I see a lot of you guys, pretty normal guys, but none of you are princes or trust fund kids or national soccer players, are you? Maybe you are, I don't fucking know. But she might meet you, she might really like you, she might be having fun with you, but she might want to keep a distance just in case some national soccer player is in the club who can give her attention. It's kind of funny how that works. I really like this guy, he's a humble guy, he's working on his business, he's positive, but he's not rich. He's not famous, he doesn't have 100,000 guys on, followers on Instagram. So even though she might like you, she wants to keep her options open early in the club. So there's a bit of a kind of exchange, hello, goodbye, hello, goodbye, with different groups in the club early on. Honor that and work with that. Give yourself fucking options. 
So the girl is probably going to reject you because she's dreaming of some better guy who may not even exist. All right, except for me and Richard, we do exist. You know, I, okay, so I have 110,000 followers on Instagram. It's the most ridiculous cheat code you can ever have. Does anybody have more than that? Some of you pickup guys might have heaps. Alvaro Reyes had like 250,000. It's fucking amazing. Do you guys know Alvaro, Alvaro Reyes, the Spanish pickup guy? Yeah, he's a fucking good guy. We like hike Machu Picchu together. He's hilarious, that guy. Uh, so I recommend Alvaro, Re Alvaro, Alvaro Reyes. Not that I can pronounce it. Cool. But just showing them that Instagram thing and, and working really hard on your Instagram account is important. And also when you go, go to meet the girl a little bit later on, when you connect the first meeting to the date, you can figure out what areas does she hang out in, what are her interests, um, where would be logistically easy to suggest a date, all that kind of stuff. Get that fucking Instagram, send a message, maybe even take a selfie together. One of the most ridiculous pickup lines that I teach my guys in 4 Week Natural to kind of get them into a state is I say, Eric, fucking get over there and take a selfie with that girl's hair as your mustache and put it on your Instagram. It's like, wow, can I do that, Alex? Yes, Eric, you can. Fucking get over there. Eric, sorry, my, my pronunciation. So you use your Instagram really, really well. Now, now we're talking. Now we're talking. Wet floor point. All of a sudden, like the nice guys in the club, like the chode, they're holding their drinks, they're being really chody. All of a sudden, the regular chodes of the men of the world, they become a bit like evil. Like, I don't know, like a horns. I'm so good at drawing. A bit drunk. There we go. How educational. <laughs> All of a sudden, this is where things, start to be, where things start to work. And it also has to do with your state. All of a sudden, regular guys start getting drunk. Uh, you know, I, I've lived and worked in uh, Serbia, Croatia, and Bulgaria. And Eastern and Central European guys, when they're drunk, they're big. Their mums feed them well. It's encouraged and they get a bit, uh, what's the word? A bit uh, defensive. Yeah, paranoid. They get a little bit uh, low self-esteem about you stealing their girls. And all of a sudden they become like defensive and, and shitty. They start grabbing girls, they start being uncalibrated. And here you were, imagine this. You spoke to the girl a little early on, a little earlier on in the night. You were nice, you were friendly, you exchanged Instagrams, but she wasn't really that into you. I fucking hate this. I don't know what time clubs close here in Poland. What is it like? 11 a.m. or something? 11? Three. Five. 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 Okay. We'll say, we'll say girls get sore high heels by about 4 a.m. No, Polish girls are fucking born in high heels, aren't they? So maybe five. We'll say five. They can go to five. The problem with you motherfuckers is that by the wet floor point, by the time everyone's getting energetic and having fun, you're making the conclusion that you're having a bad night. Who here feels this at about 1 a.m.? I'm having a bad night, coach. Fucking fix me. Shut up. Right? This, it sucks. It really, really sucks. You've done, you know, one, two, three, four approaches, and the girls keep running away. Obviously, you might think that you suck, or your game sucks, or the girls don't like you. This is not the case. If you speak to a group of three girls, likely one is going to be particularly hot, one is going to be mediumly hot, and the other one's going to be not so hot. Now, these girls might have known each other, known each other for a little while, a month. They work together, long-term cousins, something. And one of those girls in that group of three is going to feel really shitty about herself, right? And if the hot and popular girls have fun talking to a new guy, it's only going to make the girl feel crappy. So the hot girls who you want, they need to be good friends. They need to honor their friendships before they honor a new guy. So the hot girl, she might be interested in you, but her allegiance and her commitment is to the group of her friends. Fair enough, let her do that. She really can't let go of her friends until the end of the night. So even if she does like you, she's not allowed to show it because you can imagine she's had the conversation with her friends over the past couple of years, you're an attention, the, the, the ugly ones will say, you're an attention seeker, you're a bad friend, I expected more of you, you let me down. Girls are a little more dramatic and a little bit more verbally edgy to one another than we are. Just realize that, right? Realize that, that the girl has an allegiance to her friends. So, you know, obviously, speak to all three girls in the group and actually 
one of my, my students in Oslo. I flew in from Oslo an hour ago and I fly out tomorrow morning first thing to come and speak to you great guys. One of, one of my students, he always gets this so wrong. He just approaches one girl and forgets the fucking friend. It's so, do you guys like, do you, do you know what an amoeba is? It's a scientific term for an organism. An amoeba is a group of girls. Like, girl, 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 right? But it's all one thing. It's one thing. And it kind of like, yeah, colder, colder. It kind of like moves and morphs together. You need to engage it together. I, I want to make a fucking point here. Imagine there's a group of girls. This is going to get dangerous. And there's a hot girl and there's like the average friend. And she's okay. She's average, yeah. Right? You don't have class, you're average. And you talk to the hot girl and you completely fucking forget the friend. You might as well walk up. Oh, fuck you! Knock the fucking friend out. Hi, nice to meet you. I know game. I go to the fucking Soapon Summit. Don't knock that thing down. Sorry, Matthias. What's your name? It's so ridiculous. You know, you, you almost need to be like a tennis game, right? Are there any famous Polish tennis players, Eric? Yeah, Hubert Turgatin. Hubert Turgatin. <laughs> so imagine, <laughs> imagine you're talking to the girls and you're like a tennis game, like, huh, 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 huh. And what's going to happen? You get a kind of a Romeo and Juliet effect. You're speaking to the nutritionally undisciplined, the cosmetically misaligned. You're including her and she's like, oh my God, a guy spoke to me. And she does want the attention, but she can't have the attention. You're, you have to make yourself aloof. You have to include everybody. It's almost like panning for gold. If you speak to a group of three girls, Usually the hottest and most available will work out with you at the end of the day. One of the questions that I often get is, how do you get the hottest girl's attention? It works out at the end. It works out at the end, but you need to include everybody. I love it when the nutritionally unmiscalibrated girl will say, I like him, with her like wings flapping on the side, like, I, I like that one, he's nice. But she doesn't actually have the, the confidence or she doesn't feel like she would belong with that kind of confident guy. And to be honest, some of the less attractive girls, they really aren't comfortable getting naked with a stranger. But the other girls are. So it's really important to remember the group together. Now back to you. You're at this point. Wet floor point. People are spilling shit everywhere. Drunk guys are getting aggressive. Girls start becoming extra defensive. But they also become liberated. They almost their defensiveness kind of makes them more confident. More people are approaching them, they're getting in a better state, they're waking up more, they're becoming more empowered. Sure. Girls love stimulation, getting pumped up, they love drama and thrills. Spectacular. But your interpretation at about, say like two, two o'clock in Poland, 2 a.m. A.m. So scientific. Your interpretation is, I'm tired, I don't have anything working out for me here tonight. I suck. I'm confused. I'm low value. I'm not getting attraction. And you conclude these negative things and then you start to spiral downwards. Who experiences that old, that old one? Just go to bed. Yeah. Now this, this is what, this is the moment that makes the man, right? It comes into a high energy state after the wet floor point. But you've got to realize, if you're feeling that shittiness inside of you, you're not getting any traction, you're not having that much fun, maybe you, you know, you're probably pick up guys so you don't want to get drunk and go crazy. Fair enough, good idea, right? Save the money, be intelligent about it. But it's at that point, the whole dynamic changes. It's at that point that you can camp on a girl and her group. It's at that point where you can be friends with the girl and then protect her or stand by to, to deter other creepy guys attacking them. Now this is a little bit hard for you to digest and we were, I know we worked on it really hard with uh, Eric and uh, Richard on 4 Week Natural in Croatia. At the wet floor point when everyone's going a little bit crazy, we're basically clumsily, goofily just hanging out with a group of girls, even if they don't seem that interested. But when the creepy guys start hitting on those girls, they're like, oh fuck, 
this guy's actually, I like this guy. He's cool. I don't hate him. He's not being creepy. And then you can spend a bit of time together. Now, once you make the decision, now this is a really, really critical point of your own game development. We call this, this is a big part of our curriculum, called the decision. You need to make a decision of which girl you're going to go to, go for, and in which group. You can make any variety of decisions. You can go for a girl who's easy to get, but not that attractive. Remember, girls who are not as naturally attractive or as cosmetically profound, they don't have as complicated social lives as girls who are mega beautiful, mega popular, and mega cosmetic. So it's a little bit of an easier decision to go for a less mega attractive girl because she doesn't have as many factors going on around her. Or you are, you are allowed to make the decision for a girl who's almost impossible to get, got a lot of fucking friends, a lot of guys who are aware of what she's doing, and a lot of people that's kind of gossiping about her. So you can decide either way, the easy road or the slightly more complicated road. If you're a strong guy and you're patient and you can deal with all the complexities and you can hang out with her and her friends and the, the amoeba and the dance floor all the way to the end of the night, then you can make a huge impression by basically winning over all of her friends, dealing with all of the guys who might be defensive and then leaving the venue with their group at the end of the night. Obviously, you've got the Instagram earlier. It can happen that way. Or you can take it easy and go for the less attractive girl. Depends, okay? Question of clarification. Yeah, you basically are in the club and use the fact that it's full of chodes to tip on her and you basically stand out because you're just a normal guy, you're sympathetic and you have like connected before with her. What he said was the advantage that, that you're saying that I'm telling you yeah. is that you're a normal guy and you can have a longer interaction rather than an attractive interaction. Do you, do you know the difference? We're not trying to blow her socks off with attraction material. That will come. Let me go back into attraction. Let me go back into attraction. If you're being overly confident, overly physical, unnecessarily loud and aggressive, you're gonna make people defensive. And if a girl is defensive, she's looking at you through a pinhole. She's looking at you from behind a shield. And all of your game and your lines and your routines and your compliment and your rapport, it's all gonna be filtered heavily through a defense shield. If you go in more like under the radar, a re-approaching a re type of game, almost disqualifying yourself by being a little bit clumsy, spilling a drink on yourself, tripping over yourself, saying, I feel stupid, things like that, disqualifying yourself, she doesn't see you as a threat. So she can relax and maybe you can reapproach again and again and again. And if you don't have defensiveness, you can have openness. If you're super aggressive on your attraction material, you'll cre you will create defensiveness and the girl will s bump into you again in the club and she'll be like, ah, fuck. There's that guy who's just trying to pick, pick me up. So I'm actually telling all of my students and telling you now that you're allowed to do less, but do more approaches of the same group, all right? I know it's hard to digest because you all want to think, if I do more energy and effort, it should give me more results. No, the front door rule is the goal. Even if the girl is really, really attracted to you, if the girl sees you as famous or a soccer player or really a good looking guy or something, she might think I'm naturally attracted to this guy. I'm going to be more defensive. I also want to remind you, talk about this in a second. There's different tracks you can take when approaching a girl. Aim for the friendship track or aim for the one night stand track. We'll get into that in a second. Go ahead. Yeah. I just wonder when you start escalating more and be, like adding more like clarity and, and such. Great question. When do you start escalating more doing the physical stuff? We use, we use these key terminologies. We don't use intent because that makes defense. We don't use that. But we do use things like physical expression. Stand up here for a second. Yep. <clears throat> so I'll do an approach and I want to be quite friendly on the girl. I don't want to be like, hey, what's going on? You know, like getting in her face, cutting the space, being aggressive, squaring up, hitting a fucking friend in the head with a chair. I just want to be pretty normal. I might roll up and I say, hello, nice to meet you. I'm an eligible bachelor. Good to see you. 
yeah, <laughs> my friends are fucking jealous, assholes. Are you jealous of me? And I've shown that I can if I want to. I'm showing that I can escalate if I want to. It's not intentful, it's not leading, it's not escalation. It's just subtle. Like playful or? Just like that. Yeah. I'm just showing that I can. Just showing that I can do it if I want to. I'm like, boys, fuck off, she's mine, she's mine. And I'm not really like hitting on you and I'm not even looking for your reaction. I'll include everybody. Another maneuver that we use all the time, it's called the hand cuff. <coughs> Exhibit A, place on wrist, and then you have a hand. Oh, fuck, bitch. What was that for? <laughs> Escalation techniques. First time I slapped an RSD coach or a previous RSD coach? RSD coach? <laughs> previous RSD coach. <laughs> Forward natural. Forward natural. Other, other things you can do with the, uh, with the handcuff. I, I would get, <laughs> Richard would do things like just rubbing it on his ass. You can like feel my, feel my beard. Andrew would do that one. Um, another one, obviously you can, you know, get the girl, oh, all, all these silly maneuvers, right? So the handcuff for the win. Take a seat. Nice shorts, by the way. A bit of a turn on. Good for the demonstration. <laughs> That's such a low consciousness joke, guys. Fuck. <laughs> right here. Yeah, question? Clar clarify. Yeah, quick clarification question. Mm. Uh, so the approach involves a lot of reopening. So I'm wondering if you know, I can imagine that working well in a small venue, small club. What if you're in like Encore Beach Club in Vegas? It's massive. Mm. If you don't, you'll probably never. I got it. I got it. The question was, if you if you're basing your game on reapproaching, what if you lose the girl in a big club? By the way, Encore Beach Club is like one like one of the biggest clubs on the planet in history, right? We were at a club in Norway last night that has four levels and about a thousand people. It can be done. It takes like three minutes to scan through the crowd. You find the girl, you bump, you ac accidentally bump into her again. Oh, hey, I gave you my Instagram earlier. You're like, oh, cool, you're a nice girl. You're actually, guys, you actually want to be a little bit like the friend zone. I, I'm pretty old now. I'm like 34 and I'm usually hitting on girls who are like 23. I'm like, oh, you're so fucking nice. You're hot. My brother is 27. I'm 34. He's in Australia. You should go and meet him. Disqualify the girl right away. Now I'm doing all this attraction material, but at the same time, I'm like disqualifying her. So I'm basically friend zoning the girl. I'm friend zoning the girl. So I'm putting her on the friendship track. If you're in Vegas, you can do the one night stand track. And this is a big problem that so many of you guys get is the girl can't understand you either as a good social friend type of guy or a guy who's down to fuck right away. Let me, let me make this really, really clear. I think some of the more aggressive speakers who have been up here this week, maybe they live in Vegas, maybe they live in Ibiza or whatever, you can go out in these places and you can play polarizing, aggressive, intimate type of game and you will miss hit you know, 14 out of 15 girls. You recognize that opportunity, you make the move, you take her home, good for you, you know, good for you, you get laid, right, fair enough. But there's not a lot of skill in that, not as much skill as trying to do both. For the most part, if you're an attractive guy with all the moves but not doing intent and you friend zone her, but you're including all the attraction, you get all the game, a lot less of the defense, and you set up this kind of interactions where you can reapproach as many times as you want because familiarity is king. Not attraction, not game, familiarity is king, and then the exit strategy at the end. That's what gives you a huge fucking advantage. So, we're looking at all this kind of thing. We're in the wet floor point time, yep. I just want to ask you, Alex, with the girls getting their Instagram so do it with Facebook, um, often I've seen like, girls sort of at their wet floor point and start drifting off to other clubs or going home or whatever. So maybe you've done 10 Facebook clothes or whatever and two, two or three of the girls might be left. Are you following up with them that night at all? Or you Quest yeah, question was, in the early stages of the night when people are anxious, people are a little, little bit defensive, you might get Facebooks, Instagrams or whatever. Some of the girls might leave early. They might leave much earlier in the night. Now, those girls who are leaving early or changing to different clubs, if it's a fair decision, go happen to go with them to the same club. If they're a really good match, if you really wanna go for that girl, if you wanna fight for that outcome, by all means, go to the next club. It's your decision who you want to pursue and try to get that night. So if you see them going out the door, you might follow them out and say, hey, exactly. Where are you guys off to and exactly. Well, I, 
what he asked was, if you see the girls leaving, should you go with them and say, hey, can I come with you? Or, hey, should I go along? Just happen to go to the next venue with them. Because you don't know, sometimes they're just jumping in a cab. If they're jumping in a cab, it could be the end of the night. Or what, what works really, really well, and I'm kind of getting ahead of the jumping the gun here a second. When you're going out for one night stand, uh, pick up in the nightclub or a party, it's really important that you do leave the venue with the girl, even if it is before the end of the night. So the girls walk out, you notice that, they're getting in a taxi, and in the club it's crazy. In the club, the girls actually have the value in life. And if you guys didn't really realize this, in society today, women do feel hard done by and a little inferior in the workplace, in, on the pay scale, socially and emotionally. They feel like they don't get a fair chance at life compared to men. But in a nightclub, they get more than a fair chance. That's their moment to shine, have fun, forget all their worries. So if you can be with them in the nightclub and then transition back out into the reality, you've done and made a connection with the girl that no other guy has. It's so fucking important. A number in a, number in a nightclub, what is that worth? Fucking nothing. A number in the nightclub and you walk out of the club with her, you give her some compliments on the way out, you hug her, you know her friends. And then importantly, if you say something to the effect of, my friend's in there, he's hooking up with his ex-girlfriend, I'm done for tonight anyway, I'm gonna get a hot dog and go home. What do you eat in Poland? Like some sauce, what is it? Pierogi. Pierogi, I don't even know what that is. What? And you, you say to those girls, nice to meet you. And the girls can see that you've left with that girl She's gonna think, hmm, that guy actually fucking stood out. He left the club with me. It was coincidental for all she knows. She, you know the friends, you complimented her, and you didn't run back in. That makes a number respectably solid. There's of course many other ways to make a number solid, but that's, that's critical. All right, now, we're past the critical wet floor point. You've made a decision of who you want to try to play for. Now we have a concept called in-game game. Anybody ever heard of that one, in-game game? Great, maybe got some Alex followers here in the room. When, you're, when you've got a good thing going on with a girl, and I remember this when I was learning game, it freaked me the fuck out. Have you ever had the experience where you've got a good thing going on with a girl and you're like, shit, I don't wanna fucking lose this, I think I'm only gonna lose this. She likes you, you're chatting, you're one-on-one, -on -one. And it almost becomes too predictable just to hang out together for the, for the remainder of the night. At this time, in-game game, it's insanely critical that you include other people with you and her. Who here thinks that isolating the girl is a good idea? Get the girl into isolation. Who the fuck taught you that? Who taught you that? G the Jeffy Show from 2007, remember. We didn't invent, invent in-field video until 2009. So how can you know? If you've got a good thing going on with a girl in the club, do not fucking isolate her. If you become isolated by, by chance, you know, that's okay, life goes on. But if you can be there, have her on your arm, give her a couple of compliments, troll her a little bit, and include other girls in the conversation, or include other guys to talk to her, she's gonna have this ongoing engagement She's gonna see that you're more confident because you're kind of like holding court. You've got a bit of authority among random people. She's gonna fear losing you to other chicks uh, and you're gonna put her under pressure by including other creepy guys. Once you've captured a girl's attention or made the decision you've got a good thing going on, you then need to basically put it at risk to keep it engaged for her to say, stop fucking pushing me to other guys. And then you're good. You're good. You've got to include other people. Include your friends, include her friends. Do not get into isolation until at the end of the night. Something like Romeo and Juliet. The, the, the prince and the princess, two hyper busy people. They're not just boringly coming together. You need to keep other people involved. Then we have another concept called sexy girl dance time. Anyone ever heard of that? A little bit more bro science from Australia. Sexy girl dance time is pretty straightforward. You've got a good thing going on with the girl. The club is getting energetic. You can barely fucking hear anything. Uh, people are drinking, guys are aggressive. Girls love to dance. Do you know how painful it is to stand in high heels? Anyone ever done that? Polish girls in the room? We had to do this like a uh, charity in Australia, like walk a mile in her shoes in high heels. It's fucked up. But when you're wearing high heels and you're dancing, oh, 
really distributes the weight on through the legs so you can dance a lot easier in heels. So take the girl to the dance floor and let her dance. The dance floor is the one 30 minute block of a girl's week where she is the goddess, she's the queen. She can feel beautiful, she has no pressure, she has no expectations. The girl can feel relief. You know that feeling of relief like when you finish exams or you get paid on payday? That feeling of relief when a girl is on the dance floor with people that she likes, music that she likes, people that she trusts and she can just let it all go. That is her little corner of fucking bliss and you gotta be the guys to encourage that. I know that some guys are thinking, I'm gonna fucking drag her out of the club early on and try to fuck her. It's better if you keep her in the club, encourage her to dance, let her feel sexy, let her feel admired, and she's only gonna work herself up to want you even more, all right? Now, we're getting towards the end of the night here. We have another concept called the inception dynamic. I'll talk about that in a second. Question again. Do I throw her on other guys when I take her to the dance floor? Kind of. I might bump her into some other creepy guys. There's always, there's always guys who come into the club late. They've got like these really, 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 really dark tans, these guys. They've got like all this jewelry and this like uh, Yeezy type shoes. And they're coming in like, yo girl, what up? So, and those guys come in, these, these guys with the fucking tan. And they only come in at the end of the night and they don't try to score off the dance floor. Those guys actually know what they're doing. They've got a good game. So I'll kind of bump her into those guys, then take her back. I'm just kind of, I don't want things to be predictable. Your game has to be non-linear. Why would a girl watch a movie if she knows the ending? She needs to kind of feel like she's going to lose you. She needs to not exactly know what's going to happen. Alrighty, who here thinks they're in a bit of the ad advanced phase of the game? The coach is at the back probably. Bit, uh, no, no one here is advanced, okay. What I'm trying to do, and this is an advanced piece of psychology that maybe will work for you, is something called the inception dynamic. And all of what I've said so far is leading up to this. You're using all of your game skills and confidence and know-how that you've learned all week. The only thing that I'm asking you to do differently is not trigger defensiveness, do all the actions, don't look for reactions, and basically friend zone her, basically. If you're an abundant guy, you'll know that every girl is a pleasure and a fucking nightmare. If you're a scarce guy, you'll know that every girl is a means by which you can prove to yourself that you're good with girls. A girl is for you to prove to yourself that you're getting better at game. A guy who dates a lot of girls, we know that girls are both brilliant and horrible. They can be both. You guys, she's just there to prove yourself, pr prove something to yourself. So the inception dynamic is when you spend a lot of time with a girl, you're having a lot of familiarity, physical comfort with one another, you're not trying to escalate things for the sake of escalating things, you're including her friends, but you're not directly trying to get her to like you. You want to plant an idea in that girl's head. You want to plant a question. This is a magical trick that if you can get, you, if you can get her to do it, she'll be the opposite of defensive. If you're spending a lot of time with her and you're a popular guy and you're approaching a lot of different girls and of course once you've chosen that one girl and it goes later in the night and you're talking and bouncing high fives and waves and talking to other girls you've already met, she's going to form this magical question in her head, why doesn't this guy hit on me? I'm going to make him hit on me. Every other guy is intimidated by me. Mr. Popular over here talks to everybody. He can escalate. He is confident. He doesn't give a fuck, but we're always hanging out. Why isn't this guy trying harder for me? If you get her onto that thought loop, she will game you. And we all know what happens when a girl games a guy. You get the fucking girl. So we're trying to set that up with all of these concepts. The problem is you're all overblowing it so quickly. You're all doubting yourself so early in the fucking night. You're all losing state, losing energy, taking negative feedback the wrong way. It, it all revolves around the wet floor point, the two shifts in dynamics. Now, towards the end of the night, energy, energy, drunk, aggression, a lot of guys, a lot of craziness. You should have made your connections earlier in the night. You can do a couple of reapproaches. The girl who, who likes you, she may not even give you any attention all night, even if she does like you, even if you have her Instagram. 
But at the end of the night, when you step out onto the side of the street, onto the side of the road, you you always have this like <clears throat> rabid penguin colony. You know, all these people like wandering around like, rah, 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 what are we gonna do? What are... You've gotta be the guy then, a man with a fucking plan. So if at the front door time, you go from the crazy Polish nightclub out into the street, then you're the man with a the plan, then everything can happen. A lot of the girls actually go and hide on the dance floor towards the end of the night just to avoid creepy guys or to, to be good friends to one another, not to let each other down as friends, fair enough. But at the end of the night, it can all simply work out. On programs, when we're coaching, when students are with us, by two o'clock they might be like, I'm having a horrible fucking, I didn't get an Instagram. Like, dude, you can never conclude the value of your night until the end of the night. <coughs> Who here has had one of the funnest nights of their life, but got no results? Everyone? Shouldn't that feel fucking awful? You had the best night of your life, talking to this girl, talking to that girl, didn't get a makeout, didn't get an Instagram, didn't get laid. Fuck you, that should have sucked, right? But at the same time, maybe you go out, you get five Instagrams, you're escalating on girls. Shit, I didn't get laid, my expectations are all defied. And you, you hate yourself, it's just you punishing yourself. By understanding front door dynamics, you're not gonna be so pumped up in the wrong way and not so let down, so hard on yourself in the wrong way as well. You'll have a nice, even, fair state towards yourself, which means you're open-minded and easygoing and positively bubbly all the way up until the end of the night. And that's when you might see the girl at the end of the night, they've left the club, they get in their jackets. Oh, what's a good, Monica. Monica, that's a Polish name? Yes. Yeah. Monica. Yeah, Monica's, Monica's always come to Australia from Poland. They're looking for Aussie boyfriends. Monica, what's going on? She's like, oh, hey, I know you, cool. And I thought, like, oh, we're getting an Uber to go to my friend's party or my, my, my house or whatever. How many of you are there? There's three of you. Are you not gonna break shit? Okay, come with us, come with us. Then you can, then you can apply the beast mode, the aggression, the persistence, the alpha male shit. Then you can do it. I'm just asking you to time your run, okay? Time the deployment of your energy properly. Mm. We might have the club, the car to come home. Is that, do they sort of get the... I get his jacket, he gets the car. And I've got my, my girl and her friend. And I'm like, guys, get in the car. There's no taxi. She's like, we're not getting in a car with strangers. I four times rule. I'm like, get in the car. She's like, no. Like, get in the car. There's enough seats. We're living in the same direction. And I really like hanging out with you. Like, we've just hung out for the last 15 fucking minutes. Oh, sorry. 90 minutes. We just hung out for the last 90 minutes. It's totally fine. Do you want my ID? She's like, I'm not getting in the car. I'm like, get in the car. Okay, in the car. And off we go. Simple as that. Actually, in that particular video, it was in Boston in like 2013. We, we drive the two girls home. We drop one off. Then we drop off the second girl outside of her house. And all the way in the, the vehicle on the way home, she's saying, you're not coming in. Nothing's going to happen. You're not coming in, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, I, I don't want to come in. I just want to check the structural integrity of your door frame. I'm like, Jesus, I'm a carpenter. Just want to check it. That, that's all. I don't want to come in. There's some fucking, just some bullshit, right? And, and I, I was like touching her thigh and I'm like, oh, I'm a thigh ecologist. <laughs> These stupid things that come in your head in the heat of the moment. And when, when the, my assistant, he pulls up outside of her house, I'm like, okay, Ashley, I'll see you later. I give her a hug outside of, I give her a hug outside of the house. Then my assistant like <laughs> speeds off, like the wheels spin and he just disappears up the street. Like, Kevin, what the fuck? Like, you didn't need to do that. I'm like, Ashley, can I come in? She's like, yeah, sure. Straight in, straight into her house. And on that, on that evening, I went upstairs, she gave me a beer and I think she'd broken up with a pretty serious boyfriend like two months earlier. We hung out, that was fine. Then the assistant came back and collected me like a 35 minutes later. And then I dated her and hooked up with her two days later on the Monday or whatever it was, right? So here is a bit of a different way, an evolved way, and a combination of new ideas that I, I want to help your game immediately, immediately. Now, obviously this kind of know-how and this coordination is an advanced knowledge of game, but it has all these different advantages and that's what I coach on Four Week Natural. When you do Four Week Natural, you get like eight 
night game sessions, eight day game sessions, a whole lot of bonus sessions. And what we do actually, we give you in-field video iPads. So during the, the course, you can watch all these videos of me in like 15 different nights out, hooking up, pulling, overcoming objections, so you can study your little hearts out and make the most of the course. Do you guys have any questions about what I've spoken about here so far? You're all looking pretty tired and it's a hot day in here. Let's blast through these. Go ahead, sir. Say that again. Like people will like maybe have friend with Joshua, so say with Joshua. Judge, yep. Yeah. So even if like she's feeling attracted, like comfortable with you because you don't put a lot of pressure. You have been very friendly and it. She may I have the impression that from yesterday that she may not take the decision at the end to go with you alone. I'm I'm not talking about like a social pool like with a friend and you you win the friend. But if you are just you and she with her friend, you are doing like uh, the photo like pool. Uh, yeah, even if you are staying here, uh, like, is your friend like you, something like this? Maybe, like, do you have the impression that sometimes they, they will stick together, even if they are going not home, like, together, just because, like, she is having the belief that, you know, she's maybe not confident, like, Swedish girl, because I know. So, so what do you think about this? The question is, Alex, do you think that girls judge each other to the point that they will not go home with a guy, even if they like the guy? I mean, not like special girls, but like in general, like in her mind, like she, it's like limited belief. Like she, she can be even believe that, like yeah. she can go with you, like in like for, for instance. Yeah, yeah. D do girls act defensively because they're being judged by friends and people, stuff like that? Yeah, guys. Go oh, he's back, hey, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> you've you've got a swagger. I've got to meet you, like. <laughs> 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 it's pretty good, it's pretty good. Have you been doing this all week? All right, no. What, what you gotta realize, I, I've been in uh, long-term relationships with some beautiful, beautiful, beautiful girls. And the way girls speak to each other is not good. It's not fucking good. Even like, you know how girls will go out with their group from work or their cousin or their school friends or their high school friends? So if that girl, they're on a night out with their cousin or their friends or something, they go and hang out with you, then all the girls go off together on their own and they're like, that girl's a fucking bitch. She doesn't, she's not a good friend. A girl can't win. A girl can't be okay. And there's always exceptions to the rule, but girls are so fucking mean to one another. And the general rule in a girl's own mind, her rule is I don't fuck on day one. Generally, her rule is I don't fuck on day one. If you're going to buy a car, are you going to walk into the dealership and put down the 30,000 euros on day one? No, usually you evaluate it a little bit. So it's a general societal rule, and I kind of go on that rule. And if you, if you kind of adhere to their standards of judgment, ah, don't be a slut, do not go home on day one, but we can hang out on day one. Don't, don't hook up on day one, and you kind of empathize that you're aware that a girl shouldn't drop her panties on day one. If you say it that way, she's like, huh, I'm going to be unpredictable. I might sleep with you on day one just because you expected me not to. So the judgment factor is huge from the friends, even if she is really, really attracted. And another thing, with girls having sex on day one, they, if they are going to have sex and they are clear of mind and mature, they kind of want to bring their A game. If she's going to hook up with you for the first time, she wants to perhaps do it on a date. She's showered, she's groomed, she's wearing the right kind of underwear, she shaves her legs, all that kind of stuff. She wants to do a great job at what she identifies as being good at, which is sex, the first time that she does it. As opposed to, ah, fuck it, I'll have a one night stand. I haven't shaved my legs. That's some of the thinking that goes on in the girl's head. Does that answer the question? It doesn't look like it has. I want to hang out with them in an after-party situation. Yeah. I, if, if I sense an opportunity that, yes, I could close them that night, fuck yeah, of course I'll go for it. In places like Las Vegas, that's the status quo. In places like Brisbane, Warsaw, Stockholm, it's not the status quo. In party circles in Warsaw, Munich, London, where there's cocaine, champagne, and $10,000 bottles, people sleep around. But in the regular society, 
generally it doesn't happen on day one. And if you act, if you anticipate that, then you get laid more. So that it's you see the kind of the, the balancing act of it. Yeah. So you told about like this inclusion of the friends, like the inclusion of the friends, yeah. like not hitting the friends in the fucking head with a chair. Yeah. Yep. Starting them up, giving them also attention. Yep. And giving your girl divided attention. Probably. Absolutely, divided attention is the key word. Yep. If, by the way, if you guys are winging with your friends and your friends are giving the girl undivided attention, punch him in the side of the head. Say, hey, divide your attention. The, the minute the girl senses undivided attention, she's like, uh-oh, I'm being hit on. This is predictable. Go ahead, sorry. Yeah, so in that case also, won't it be relying a bit on... Because I have situations where this inclusion of friends has... I have taken it, uh, done it, but maybe not the level of perfection you're talking about. But still, uh, I have done it. But the thing is, there are some girls who enjoy that they are the, uh, given the attention. But towards the end, again, they br uh, come back to their bitchy self, whatever you call it. Like, they again bring back that jealousy and everything. And again, they say, no, you know, like, we have, I, I have to take care of my friend. And she has a boyfriend. She again comes back. So it's again, like, what I'm, my question is, is it again relying on that ethical thing that you have been good to the friends, so they will be good to you. So again, relying on that ethical thing rather than being really solid about it. Like if I'm fair to the friends, I can expect them to be fair back to me? Yeah, yeah. Is it like we are expecting, but randomness can come, so what do you do? Because you invested and you really believe, like you said, we can walk away with the end of the night. But well, then again, the friends become the very same uh, cock blocky type whatever. Look. You have to realize that if you game the amoeba, remember the amoeba, it's like a moving being that doesn't separate. Three girls, four girls. And of course, guys, there's always exceptions to the fucking rule. Women are mature enough to break off from their friends if they want to, sure. But as a rule of thumb, speak with all three of them equally. And when you reach the point of no return with your group for the night, could be at the door of the Uber, uh, her front door, uh, hotel or whatever, it's totally fine if you say goodbye to all three at once. However, if you've identified that one of them is single and available, she is the one who you should add the physicality with, whereas the ones who are the friend don't add physicality. Include all of them, compliment them, uh, encourage them, troll them a little bit, but only physicality with the hottie. You know, treat her like a little kid, a little bit playful. Spend a little bit more time with her. The entire interaction. I don't, I, like, if I'm trying to pull, I'm in a club tonight, and I've got a girl, and she's got a guy friend and a girlfriend, and I'm staying at a hotel. I'm gonna say, hey, girl and two friends, let's all go to my hotel. And it's clear, it's clear that me and her have been arm in arm, mingling, like canoodling at the bar, and then I'll, I'll, I'll keep bringing the fucking friends over. I assume, here it's, I've only got one day, so I'll, I'll try a little bit harder. But I'll try to keep including them to the point that the friends are like, we're going, we're going, you two have fun. I'm like, no, don't go, I like all of you. Like, we're fucking going. If you're trying to isolate just one little bit, the friends will be like, oh, we have learned from the last five years of experience to try to be defensive because we don't know what else to fucking do. Does that answer that question? Yeah, answer almost. Yep. Again, uh, what I was asking is, should you, should you go like a bit more like, yesterday as he was talking about like, busting the, the cock blocky friend, uh, towards the end, if she's again not like coming back to her original self of uh, trying to defend you, or I mean, uh, no, this is not going to happen. That frame, you should shouldn't you be more a bit more, you know, solid, aggressive, or whatever you call it. With the cock, with the with the cock blocks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With the cock, he's asking about cock blockers. <clears throat> what you do, I I kind of get them on side. I say. Thank you. So glad we have you in the world. And uh, we got a cockblock in the in the office, and she does a great job. So we all we all like feel safe. Thank you. I, we actually call her the sniper girl. So I'm, I have I have videos of this, and a girl like these girls, they're always nutritionally undisciplined or cosmetically uneducated. I don't know what the fuck. So they they'll come over like she she is my friend. She is coming home with me. I'm like sniper girl. You're a fucking like I was screaming in her fucking face. I'm like thank you. You're a military warrior. If it wasn't for the sniper girl, 
The world would be an unchecked fucking population. Thank you, thank you. Let's get a fucking drink. Come here, come here. We're gonna be better cock blocks if we're both drunk. Come on. And she's like, I like you. I like. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we have some some good videos of that one. So no, I, I just I I don't even really buy into it. I want I want these three girls to think between the three of them they don't they don't know who I actually like. And then the hottest one is going to think, my identity is always getting the attention. Fuck my friends. You know, girls can be very, very catty like that. Like, go, go away, female friends. I'm going for this new, confident, interesting guy. That's how I'm thinking about it. Go ahead. How do you deal with the attention uh, in the amoeba? Uh, <laughs> because it's the nutritionally undisciplined girl who wants to give you most attention. And she'll be like, he's mine, he's mine. Are you just relying on the hot friend to think you're attractive enough to try and blow her friend out? Guys, the, que the question is, the question is, if you're talking to a group of two or three, and the nutritionally undisciplined girl is giving you a lot of energetic attention, the hot friend has to step away. Because imagine the conversations they had before they went to the club, the conversations they had last weekend, and the, hot, the, the, un the nutritionally undisciplined is like getting a chance to get attention. The hot friend is like, have that chance. But what will happen is the nutritionally undisciplined girl, if she actually starts to get close to a guy, so usually they run their race and they fizzle out, and it's kind of a Romeo-Juliet dynamic where you and the, the cooler, hotter, popular girl are gonna understand each other. Yeah, yeah you're, gonna, you're gonna recognize each other's like value, and you're kind of like shaking hands with the subordinates <laughs> before you finish the night with the princess. You still have to take care to divide your attention, right? Because I've had it before where she's taken all the attention and then, you know, the hot girls are talking to other guys. Yeah. So then you're just winging the hot, the other guys, random guys. <laughs> I would say, I, I would say, are you a conversational tyrant? Are you a fucking Saddam Hussein of the bar? Everybody has a voice here. You have a vote, you have a vote. What do you think? So I, I might turn the phrase like that. Fucking conversational Saddam Hussein. Everybody has a voice here. Don't suppress free speech, a nutritionally undisciplined woman. Anyway, anyway, all righty. By the way, uh, Matthias, where is he? Is he here? Uh, tell me when I can finish. Yeah, so I can keep answering questions as long as you want, but you tell me when you want me to finish. Uh, ten, minutes. 10 minutes, 10 minutes of fun, cool. Um, I'll sweep the room like Minesweeper. Shorts, talk to me. Yes, uh, thank you. And I was wondering, you talked about opening girls uh, next to the bar, because it's like an easy- Incidental like, approaches, yep. Yeah, yep. non-pressure situation. What about a group of girls that are dancing and they're like dancing really energetically? Like how would you open such a group? The question was, how do you open a group of girls on the dance floor? Basically, you don't. Basically, you don't. And in all of my years, like coaching in RSD, and we had like five or six different coaches, um, and I, I did different workshops with different guys from different companies. And in order to do like a dance floor game, there's two ways to do it. You have to be a very, very smooth, clever dancer, like actually a, like a talented dancer. Or, or, this is one way to make dance floor game work. You go, we did this in London all the time. I've got the London four week natural coming up in a month, the 3rd of October. So I say, student, student, go to that girl and ask her if she thinks that it's fair that Donald Trump should move the US embassy in London. So the girl's like dancing, energetic, woo woo. Like, tell her, do you think it's fair that Donald Trump is moving the US embassy in, into Mayfair? And they stop. So, with Donald Trump, da -da 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 -da, just going on this political fucking spiel. So if you like throw the spanner in the works, some political religious shit, that works. However, however, the girls go in a cycle. Bathroom, bar, smoking area, standing area, dance floor. Bathroom, bar, smoking, standing, dance floor. So I try to touch base, base with them before they're on the dance floor and then I'll reunite with them on the dance floor. If if you get them at a first point of contact on the dance floor, and of course on the dance floor that they, they draw attention, they look fucking hot, and that's where we idolize them because they, they're beautiful. Um, it's not a great first point of contact. And there's not a lot of social skill to that. It just helps so much if you've, uh, if you've spoken to them before. Yep. Go ahead. I'm, sweep, I'm sweeping across and then we're done. Yep. I get it that you like feel like value attraction when you talk to other girls. Do you have also with your girl that you're looking for uh, to pull 
um, a part where you try to build connection with a qualificator. Qualificator. Yeah. His question was, with the girl who I like, with the girl who I'm interested in, who I've decided on, am I focusing on connecting with her, like in terms of rapport and qualification as well? Look, if, if you can be a little bit goofy and lower your own defenses, then other people's defenses open up and therefore you connect. Some people run specific rapport techniques and that's okay. What's your dream job? What were you like as a little girl? Stuff like that, that that's fine. But even guys, when, when I'm up here on the stage, I'm doing a couple of self-deprecating, silly, loud, cra crazy sort of things to lower my formal formality. So you wanna deformalize your interactions early by doing something a little bit silly, something a little bit crazy. For example, Richard, uh, in the, the program in Havar, he's a very logically minded Dutch guy. So I'm like, Richard, you need to make these conversations less formal from the beginning. So shake the hand, handcuff the girl, and while he's talking, he'd like put her, put her hand down his chest. Or he would be talking to the girl in Ka, what is it? Ka, Nautica Adventure Bar, and it's hard to connect with those people. But people who act a little bit foolish, act a little bit playfully, they're okay. So last night in Norway, I meet the girls, nice to meet you, I'm an Instagram influencer, boom! He goes like, what the fuck? This is not attraction material, this is disarmor disarmoring. It's like, hello, I'm an idiot, Whew. but we can all be idiots. And like, thank God, we can all be idiots, we can be open and have fun. That's connection, yeah. Go ahead at the back as we sweep across the room. You're all dead, no questions over here, go ahead. <laughs> I didn't hear that super clear. Could you relay? I thought she said you will go to the girl and say, I like that you are comfortable. I like it. But who said you are rewarding your behavior? So, do you, 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 you get what I mean? Like, now I do. Now I do. <laughs> imagine, you're, imagine you're selling somebody something. I'm trying to sell somebody a hundred thousand euro car and you say fuck a hundred thousand euros is a lot of money to spend I shouldn't do it and I, I would say you're right you should be careful with your money you should make a very very careful decision and I'm showing that I'm on your side and we have a common point of view I see the value in your behavior I acknowledge it I am rewarding it but guess what I'm not the kind of guy who should be cock blocked you're doing a good job of cock blocking every other guy, but I get it. I understand the clarity of thought that you have because I'm not in that category. You're on her side immediately. That's, that's the answer to that one. Yeah. Go ahead, elaborate. Great point, great point. He asked, if you're gaming too many girls in the bar, you can really upset and piss off the girls you already spoke to. You have room to game different groups of girls and deliberately do takeaways and create options earlier on in the night where people are a little bit nervous, self-conscious, and they're not too confident yet. And the other thing is when you're gaming in this kind of style, a kind of a light-hearted, easy-going, friendly type of game. You know when uh, Shorts came up? Sure, I put his arm around me, but I'm not like escalating. So I'm showing that I can escalate, but I'm not hitting on her. Bye-bye, hitting on her. Bye-bye, hitting on her. I'm not being a player around the bar. Hey, what's going on? Nice to meet you. Good to see you. What's, what's up? So I am showing that, yes, I can talk to multiple people, that I'm Mr. Popular, but I'm not doing it in a romantic, intentful way. Later on, I make the decision, I stick with it, and the other girls can be as jealous as they want. You also talk to other uh, groups of boys and men, like to show that you are... Sure, yeah. ...everybody, not just sitting on girls. Sure. Actually, I, do, I don't like to talk to random guys, because yeah. guys are really bad at socializing in a bar. So when I talk to them, they're like, oh, finally I have a friend to fucking talk to, and they never shut up. 
So I say, oh, dude, I've got to, I've got to go. I need to go have sex with someone. Bye. And he's like, uh, good luck. Or I say, I've, I've run. I've, oh, my glass is empty. Got to go. Catch you. Oh, shit. My friend just arrived in the bar. I've got to go punch him. See you later, bro. I, I don't punch him, but yeah. All right, we're sweeping across. Yep. Okay, Swagger. So, um, thank you for coming to uh, Warsaw. You're welcome. <laughs> it's fucking tiring. I was up until uh, 5 a.m. last night. I'm on the flights at 8 a.m. this morning. And delivering this with energy. Imagine if I was your coach. Upsell. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's amazing actually. And uh, my question is not really referred to the night game, but uh, um, I just wanted to ask you about the high school situation. Oh, yeah. Uh, if you could go back in time, how would you spend your last year of high school, actually? Yeah. Uh, and my second question is, uh, some could you give me some technical advices what to specifically do if it's already on with the girl and she like, clearly likes it because she gave you some IOIs, like strong IOIs, and when you kind of, um, when, you, when you're passing by together, like very, like, there's just like very... Oh, how to respond to indications of interest. Um, how to approach Maybe her, uh, when it's already like then it's when you like look at her eyes and so on. So if you've already had approach invitations. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, we had two questions. How should you do high school game in your last year of high school? And then if a girl is giving you approach invitations, how should you work with this? Is anybody here in this room in high school? <laughs> <laughs> so no, I'm not gonna. <clears throat> I'm not going to get into the high school question. I went to an all boys high school and I tricked my dad. I made a bet with my dad to buy me these massive DJ speakers. So we, we, I was the DJ for every one of the parties at school. I actually had no friends at high school because I was hyper analytical, stressed out, analyzing weirdo. It was really bad. Then I got like Winamp. Do you know Winamp? Anybody remember Winamp? An RSD instructor, Christoph, made that. He actually, like one of the RSD guys made that and sold it for like $80 million, incredible. So I used Winamp and I played music at parties and I got laid all the time. Girls would just approach me and I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing, crying and whatever. Um, that's high, high school game. I really can't talk about it and I shouldn't talk about it like for morality reasons, right? <laughs> I, I shouldn't talk about it, right? I don't know. Also, it's in fucking Generation Millennial. You guys are all weird. You have your backpack on both shoulders. Backpack. You wear your backpack on both shoulders. You don't do one arm. Depends, you know. Yeah, don't, you're just weird. You're fucking weird. <laughs> no, just joking. No, if a girl is giving you indications of interest uh, and you're noticing that she's noticing you, I, if she's giving me indications of interest, one, one line that I like to use, I'm walking past, I'm like, oh, you, you owe me a drink. It's like, what the fuck? And then she's like, why don't you a drink? And then she'll come over and talk to you or, or something like that. So that's one way to do it. Or, guys, I've got to make it really, really clear. When, when you do have a good thing going with a girl, you don't want to lock it in. If you lock things in and lock everything else out, you become linear, predictable, and, and boring. So you want to keep on stressing the interaction, including other people, playful takeaways, almost getting in trouble from being too goofy, too aggressive, almost getting in trouble. The girl's like, you can't say that. I'm like, I'm sorry, I love you again. And then you do something stupid again. And she's like, you can't do that. I'm like, I'm sorry. One of my favorite lines to use as well is, how can you let me get away with this? So I'll meet the girl, I'm talking to her, I'm taking my belt off, or I'm trying to kiss her neck. She's telling me about her career. And I'm like, how are you letting me still try to kiss your neck in the middle of a conversation? She's like, I don't know, I'm Norwegian, I'm nice. Anyway, so hope, hopefully that yeah, answers the question. In high school, I cannot like, take my pants off. Actually. <laughs> <laughs> Look, are you born in the year 2002? Oh, 2000, 2000. He's born in the year 2000. Just get a, get a written contract for anything you're going to do. I'm going to speak to the girl. Can I have your consent? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to touch you on the back. Can I have your Are you German as well? I'm from Poland, actually. Oh, that's okay. No, nah, fuck the consent. It's fine. Joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. I'm the camera, I'm joking. Microphone, I'm joking. I'm just joking. No, um, be, just be really, really friendly. Young people are very, very nervous. Uh, create every opportunity to hang out. Create every opportunity for making out and let her take the final leaps. 
it's, it, it's even like in Hitch. Get 90% close to the kiss, let her do the last 10%. That kind of mentality, set it up, but you need to let young, nervous people have a lot of freedom to move. Yeah. But you can still make a lot of efforts towards her. I know all of you guys are tired. I know my 10 minutes are all, all, already up. Um, I'm happy to keep answering questions. I'm happy to finish if you want. I don't really care. Are you staying for Q&A? Uh, this is, I'll do this Q&A and then I'll stay a little bit. I mean, because after, we're gonna have, we are going to have a break and after that, it's going to be like one hour with all the speakers for Q&A. Ah, oh, yeah, better, I better stay for that. All right, let me wrap this. I'll ask one more question. What city are you from, by the way? Sydney. Yeah. Bloody Sydney, Sydney, the shittest nightlife in Australia. <laughs> Oh, this is so stupid. In Australia, in Australia, right, you see how you have this like 4 or 5 a.m. closing time? The, the mayor, the pre premier of Sydney, which is one of the most amazing cities in the entire planet for game, he's like, all of you people are too fucking crazy because Australians are like having a good time. They drink their drink, they smash it on a bar, and they cut someone in the neck and they die. I'm like, why is there a fucking ambulance in the club? Oh, so there's a... Somebody died again. Students, try not to die on the next approach. That guy there is cutting people. Ooh. So they shut the clubs down so you can't go out after 1.30 a.m. You can't go back in. And the whole nightlife industry died. So I don't even do night game in Sydney anymore. I only do day game stuff in Sydney. So crazy. But Sydney is fucking, fucking, fucking amazing. So many European girls go there. So Give me, hit me with the question. Yeah, so before the question, so I, I start learning salsa so I can go out during the week and have a reason to go dance with all these hot girls. Otherwise, Establishment, yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, anyway, getting back to the amoebas, so groups of girls early in the night, they could be standing or seated. Um, going through towards the end of the night, they might be lounging on lounges um, around tables, you know, more, more confined in a protective sort of formation, if you like. Yep. So assuming they're not back on the dance floor, they're around lounges or tables, how would you go and, and re-approach that? Set? Here's the question. Girls can be approachable early on but then they may not be as approachable later on when they're stuck in little lounges or sections or whatever. If, if you've done a, a nice and fair approach, you've used that magic phrase, don't let me stop you, so you're allowed to re-approach again. And you can pretty normal, you, you, can, you can normally say, uh, hey, uh, can I sit down for one drink? Let me join you for one drink. My shoes are on fire from salsa dancing. Alrighty. Gentlemen, I am Alex from the Four Week Natural. Thank you so much for my presentation here today. Yeah. Yeah. I tell, I'll just do a quick up, so. Just so, just so you all know, I live, I live and operate in Europe. I do these five week programs all around the world. My next one is London, starting on October the 3rd. It's five weekends with me. You join up to eight other students, and it's always a three to one student to instructor ratio. But the way that it works is, it's, is if we have nine guys on program on one night, Thursday I coach you three, but the other six can be in the same venue. I just don't focus on them. But of course we can talk. Friday night I do the next three, the other six can come to the club. Saturday night I do the other three. So that way, over the course of 33 days, we get something like 26 contact days. We always do a night game session, I give you drills of which you either succeed or we learn lessons. And then we follow up the next day with a debrief where I teach you what happened from the night before. Then I give you a lot of personalized feedback, obviously. I do a fashion makeover, I do your Tinder game. I'm also a professional photographer. That's how I got 110,000 followers on Instagram. Alex Media Studio, by the way, it's worth writing down. It's a fucking good account. And the cost of the 33 day program, because it's so spread out evenly, the cost can be really nice and low. So it's actually 3,800 US dollars for 33 days training, usually 25 to 28 contact days with me, uh, an ongoing contact, literally me, at your service, in your home city, in your home continent, doing what I fucking love and helping you to achieve the goals that you want. This is what I've always done. And I actually took the last two years off game to build two legacy companies. I've restructured my four week natural so that in the future I can take on instructors to represent me in the future. However, they need to buy franchise fees and stuff like that. So in the next two years, I'm looking for amazing instructors to take over this life of mine. And I also build a, built a photography business. 
So I do really professional photo shoots of models and yachts and hotels and Airbnbs all around the world. So I took a little bit of time off to re re-envision what I want to do with my future for the next 50 years and now I've got it firmly in place. If any of you guys do have any questions about the London Four Week Natural starting October 3rd, the Melbourne Four Week Natural starting November 14th, and then next year it's going to be Thailand, then Sydney, then Austin, then Oslo, then Amsterdam, then Croatia, then Warsaw in September next year, then London, then New York, then Melbourne. Just so you know what I'm doing. I usually do five weeks work, two weeks off, nine students at a time, and it's a lot of fucking fun, right? You can, those two guys sitting over there at the end, Richard and uh, Eric, you can ask them how good and bad it was. Highly dramatic programs all the time, a lot of fun and adventure had. Again, thank you so much, I'm really glad to meet you, and hopefully I'll meet some of you guys tonight. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, man, thank you. Thank you. So, great value, great speech of the last